Hi, Doran Barton here with Open Source TV, and we are still at the 2007 Utah Open Source Conference in Provo, Utah. And with me right now is Derek Carter. Hi there. Hello. Uh, Never Block. Um, Derek, how long have you been using open source software technology? And open source software, software and technology for quite a while now, ever since I was a senior in high school. Uh, what, what got you into this strange world? Uh, the school's website, actually, uh, was running on an Apache server and uh, was one of those things that, oh, this is kind of cool. Oh, you mean you don't have to pay for it? That's even cooler. Neat. And then where did, where did things go from there? Um, from there, I, uh, I've always been a geek. I've been working with computers. I found a, an interesting, I don't know if it's around anymore, it's called the Small Computer Book Club. Oh, okay. Yeah, I remember that. It's kind of like a Columbia house for computer books. Right. Uh, one month, the book of the month was uh, the Red Hat Linux Bible. Oh, wow. They sent me uh, a book. It had a couple of discs in it, and I clandestinely installed it on my mom's computer. And, Did and, she appreciate uh, that? She didn't. No, oh, okay. not at all. But uh, she didn't find out for a few months until I actually broke something and had and wasn't able to fix it. But, uh, yeah, it's uh, been addicted ever since. Now, you, uh, you've you also spent some time teaching Linux around the country, around the world. Yeah, I've had uh, uh, chances to go everywhere as far as Spain. Wow. So teaching Linux courses. So um, what types of people have you run into that surprised you that they were interested in using Linux? Well, I don't think I've ever been surprised by... Uh, anyone like this person's running Linux. I've more been surprised upon the, uh, yeah, this is an extremely interesting perso person that also happens to enjoy Linux. Um, there was a uh, student, it uh, wasn't one of my students, but uh, in a class that was run together at the same time as one of mine, who was a uh, Klingon instructor. Oh. Uh, I've run into, uh, uh, I had a student, um, to during the entire week, I, was, I thought his name sounded really familiar. I was like, yeah, this, that name is so familiar. And uh, I started quoting this book, uh, High Availability Clusters in Linux. And, uh, yeah, in this book, High Availability Clusters in Linux, blah, blah, blah. And uh, Friday, the student came up to me and said, hey, I appreciate you quoting my book. Here's a signed copy. And it was the author of the book. I, 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 I blown away. Why was so. he taking a Linux class? Uh I really don't know. Uh, it was a, a probably a week just, off work a, or just a week off of work, a week <laughs> of vacation. But uh, he's like, "Yeah, I really learned a lot." And I was like, "But you taught me. How is that possible?" Yeah. So, so you're here at the conference talking about uh, Zen and virtualization. Virtualization, yes. Um, uh, virtualization is is really uh, one of the things that's going to to take the uh, the entire computing what's the word landscape and and transform it much like the uh, the PC uh, era transformed computing um, IT is becoming more and more of a commodity yeah and virtualization helps that immensely uh, there's a uh, quite a few articles um, I forget the author there's a book called does IT matter um, which talks about the utility uh, model for computing and how companies are no longer building their own data centers. They're no longer running their own hardware. They're just hosting it They're somewhere. just hosting it somewhere and running it. Um, if you look at it, even like it's essentially outsourcing your infrastructure, uh, which you know makes sense. You don't have to go through the problem of finding a big area someplace where there's enough power and enough cooling and and uh, security and so forth you don't have to go through that effort so virtualization is just one of the things that helps make those outsourcing your infrastructure much more viable you can put a lot more machines in the same footprint so do you run Linux on your desktop yeah I haven't uh, run uh, anything but Linux with the exception of gaming so the only thing I keep my uh, Windows machine around for is win uh, Wintendo so <laughs> okay uh, what, what's your preferred distribution uh, I started uh, with the Red Hat Linux Bible Red Hat 
C- CDs that came with that. Ran that for maybe six months until I just couldn't fix it anymore. And uh, started asking around. I'd, I'd come across um, Linux user groups. Uh, found a, the one of the groups that's uh, one of the sponsors, or not sponsors, but one of the participants in this conference is the uh, Free Software and Linux Club from uh, Logan at uh, Utah State University. And uh, found them and mentioned that, you know, I, I'm having a really hard time with this this distro Red Hat. It's just kicking me in the teeth. And someone said, well, you should try Mandrake. And up until that point, I, I hadn't ever, you know, questioned, like, the whole proprietary software movement. I was like, this Linux thing's kind of cool, and it's really cool you can get it for free. You know, I got it with a book. That's awesome. Uh, I hadn't really drank the Kool-Aid yet, okay, if you will, for the open source movement. But I was like, cool, it's, I get a better product and it's cheaper. I went and bought a, uh, a copy of Mandrake, which uh, at the time was one of the more user-friendly, desktop-oriented desktop yeah. uh, uh, distributions. And uh, it had a flight simulator, it had a word processor, it had, and I paid t- you know, 45, 50 bucks for this operating system. They sent me a box and it was, it was better than, you know, what you pay uh, piecemeal for all the other pieces. Yeah. So yeah, that's started, that's how long I've been running Linux on the desktop. So what are you doing now? I mean, you come from, you know, uh, managing a web server as a senior in high school and installing uh, Linux on your mom's computer breaking it. What, what are you doing now with, with, uh, with your knowledge of open source? Well, uh, a friend of mine, Lamont Peterson, and I uh, co-founded a company called Neverblock. Uh, we are trying to leverage the virtualization craze that's going on now and, uh, and help the... Uh, our, our target is uh, more of the small to medium business market. We're not really worried about, you know, building a data center for, you know, a Fortune 1000 company or something like that. We're more interested in, you know, the 20, 30 employee company that doesn't have the resources to do, you know, a web server sure. or an email server. Uh, so we do virtual private uh, servers, okay. uh, VPSs using Zen. And uh, one of our goals is to uh, just make the customer, uh, there's a bunch of companies out there that do that. And one of our goals is to make the customer experience uh, better. Okay. Uh, Customers saying, "Hey, I want this distribution versus I want that distribution versus." I guess that's not really something you get when you go to a, a virtual a virtual server company. They should just give you the distribution that they support. This is what we're going to support, and yeah, it's it's kind of uh, I like to refer it as the uh, Henry Ford model of business. Okay, you can get any uh, model T color you'd like as long as it's black. Right, right. Uh, so. We're we're out there to giving people choices to give people choices and to make choice a much bigger part okay. of uh, the virtualization. Okay. Well, thanks for chatting with us, Derek. Mm-hmm. We wish you the best. And uh, this is Doran Barton with Open Source TV here at the 2007 Utah Open Source Conference. Thank you.